Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining this Wednesday Wellness Nutrition Tip. And I am fighting off these. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm not going to do that. Um, so I'm really happy to be live with you today. And I am hopeful you've had a great week since the last time you watched a video with me. Always happy to be live on YouTube. Today's topic is about a couple of vegetable categories. The first one is celery. I'm going to talk about it. And I'm going to talk about a couple of starchy vegetables that a lot of people have mistakenly taken out of their diet. So let me get started with my, with my talk for today. I'm really excited um, because I want to talk about celery. And celery is not the world's favorite vegetable. In fact, some people really hate it. Others are not really fond of it, but they eat it because they heard that it has negative calories. Have you heard that? Well, while serving is very low in calories, a, a, a cup provides about 16 calories. And that's two stalks of celery. It's not true that, that the, the process of digestion burns more than those 16 calories. So it really doesn't have any negative effect on the body, but there is some reason to have celery in your diet if you like it, because nutritionally, it's very nutrient rich. And a lot of people have gotten this idea that because it's so light in calories, it must not have much in the way of nutrition, but that's just not true. So let me tell you what those 16 calories worth of celery give you. First of all, they provide you one third of your daily requirement of vitamin K. Now, most people know that vitamin K is open for, is an, um, a very important nutrient for blood clotting. But what a lot of people don't know is that vitamin K is also important for bone health. So if osteopenia is a concern or osteoporosis even, make sure you get adequate vitamin K in your diet along with calcium. Celery is also a good source of folate, which is a vitamin that's really important for nerve and brain function. And I, when it comes to celery, the good news doesn't stop there. Recent research has greatly bolstered our knowledge about celery's anti-inflammatory health benefits, including its, pro its protection against inflammation in the digestive tract itself. In addition to everything else I've mentioned, Celery contains many health promoting nutrients. They're micronutrients and they're in a category known as flavonoids. Also recently scientists identified at least a dozen other types of antioxidant nutrients in celery. And these can include phenolic acid and flavones and flavanols. A tip here in regards to fresh celery is how to maximize its health benefits. Try to use celery within seven days of purchase. That's because several studies show a greater loss of those phenolic antioxidants in the celery after that week long period. So now that we've talked about celery, let's talk about celery juice. Maybe you're familiar with this craze um, I'm frequently asked about it, and I really had to do some research on it because I don't follow the channels that promote this kind of thing. But celery juice owes its popularity to Anthony William, who claims that he can communicate with the spirit of compassion. And he claims that spirit provides him with health information that's ahead of its time. He's featured on Gwyneth Paltrow's website, and she tells her followers that Mr. Williams works outside the bounds of conventional science and medicine. Oh, good. Just the person I should turn to for nutrition advice. William claims that celery juice contains undiscovered cluster salts, which account for it some miraculous properties. Really? Well, the spirit of compassion must have revealed this to him since it truly is undiscovered. There is no evidence that celery juice will accomplish any of the claims that Mr. Williams makes, including strengthening the bile, detoxing the liver, or helping the non-existent stomach gland. Still, I'm sure celery farmers don't mind 
the fact that he's making these claims because it takes a bunch of celery, one whole bunch, to create two eight ounce cups of juice, a pint of juice. And Williams recommends drinking up to double that amount daily on an empty stomach to experience its purported health benefits. You know, celery juice would be hydrating, it's a liquid. And, um, and it is going to contain some nutrients, but it's not going to be some miraculous cure-all. And what saddens me is the wasted resources. Consider how much energy and water goes into producing just one bunch of celery. You know, if you want a, a, a full cup of celery, why not just eat two stalks each day? as part of your servings of vegetables. That actually would be two servings of healthy vegetables if you ate two stalks. And you'd get all the nutrients that I already talked about, plus you'd get a, a good dose of gut-friendly fiber. And if you wanna make it tasty, you could try some good quality hummus or some unsweetened peanut butter to go along with it. And that would even compound its nu nutritional value. If you have any questions about celery or celery juice, be sure you put them in the comment section and I'll see if I can address them. All right, I'm going to move on to a couple of vegetables that people are misinformed about and so they take them out of their diet, and that is potatoes and corn. In general, the public has a very limited knowledge about the importance of carbohydrate in the body. And if you want to learn more about carbs, I have done other videos on the topic and earlier, um, it, a couple months ago, probably I did one on glycemic control. So you can get a lot of information on this subject from me, or if you have questions about it, feel free to put it in the comment section. Corn and potatoes are both starchy vegetables with either of them providing about 15 grams of complex carbohydrate per serving. And a serving we're talking about here is a half a cup. I want you to picture the healthy eating plate. And if you're not familiar with that, you can Google it, you can go to um, the USDA's website and search on myplate.gov and you can see the plate. But half of that plate is filled with non-starchy vegetables and fruit. The other half of the plate is divided in two with half being of that half being protein and the other half being a carbohydrate rich food like whole grain or something like a starchy vegetable. I want to talk about the, about the potato first and there are a lot of nutrients in the potato that make sense for you to have it and that includes vitamin B6, copper, vitamin C, and potassium. In addition, that half cup serving of potato provides about two grams of fiber. If you wanna think about what a, a serving of potato looks like, um, it'd be about the size of a billiard ball or a small fist. Corn is widely and correctly classified botanically as a grain. It's a member of the grass family, along with other familiar grains like wheat and oats and rice. However, in the culinary world, we consider it a vegetable, just like tomatoes of fruit botanically, but we consider it a vegetable. When, again, when you serve corn, consider it in the quarter of the plate allocated to the starch. And that half cup serving would be a half of an ear of fresh corn. Corn is somewhat well known for its high ratio of insoluble to soluble fiber. That means it's really good for removing low density lipoprotein from the blood and also bulking up the intestinal tract. And it's also a good source of insoluble fiber as well. On the whole, you get about two servings or two grams of fiber per serving. Nutrients of note in corn include panathenic acid, phosphorus, and vitamin B3. It's not the most nutrient dense of, of what we consider starchy vegetables, but it is still worth considering eating because in there, the scientists have discovered there are unique phytonutrients in corn and they provide us with antioxidant benefits. 
So while there are more nutrient dense vegetables, nothing beats an in season, freshly picked ear of corn that's just been steamed. Yum. Carb rich foods, in fact, all foods are more than just the sum of their nutritional parts. Scientists have identified the benefits of the food matrix. And I'm gonna be talking about the food matrix in upcoming YouTube videos. So I hope you'll watch for them and, and join me live or watch them recorded, depending on how it works into your schedule. But it is Wednesday Wellness. Thank you for joining Nancy for her nutrition tip. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments section. I like your feedback. So let me know what kind of feedback you have. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I'll connect with you again next Wednesday.